Welcome to Hashtag We Never Visit Wanuka. This is a place where we help you unravel social constructs, discuss self development in line with mental health, emotional well being, and everything in between that directly or indirectly affects us in the millennial world around us. If you're hearing my voice for the first time and are the kind of person who is not scared of being a better version of yourself, even if it requires you to contradict who you were 24 hours ago, consider this your virtual home. I am your host, Navgozi Chwanuka, a lawyer, founder, strong team lead of Equate Foundation, an addict and lover of insightful conversations, and a professional unraveler of social constructs. On today's episode, we have Hudson Hanks in the guest seat. He is a singer, writer, music producer, instrumentalist, and so much more that you will get to hear in the episode. The episode validates the necessity of asking for help and how much we need to do good for others. It further highlights a call to society to break away from stereotypes it upholds against art. So without further ado, let's get into it. The episode has various moments in which we use the Luganda, so listeners' discretion is advised. Had some hunks, surely. Hunks. And you're too vain. <laughs> <laughs> you also know that you're handsome. Uh, no. <laughs> I just know. Oh, you don't know? Eh? I don't. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> How did you become a handsome Hanks? If if it's that you don't know that you're handsome. And actually, I don't. Truth is, I don't remember how, but I remember primary. I don't know where. Primary. Primary. Yes, I remember there was a movie. Uh huh. Oh, it was, but it had something like like Hanks over which over someone Hanks. I don't remember that. But people ended up calling me Hanks. Primary seven now. And you didn't choose it? No, I didn't. But I said, okay, let me carry it on. So, so it wasn't for this thing where we were in secondary school and like, ah, he's a hunk. Ah, yeah, fine. Because <laughs> <laughs> primary, I remember primary six or primary seven. Yeah, sometimes we might call ourselves things and then in the end you're like, mm, but this suits I me. I need to change. <laughs> and you're like, but this suits me. Mm. You look at yourself in the mirror like, yeah, hunk. <laughs> <laughs> now I accept. Oh, look at yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about Hudson Hanks. Uh, Hudson Hanks is an artist. Mm-hmm. I am a producer. I am a songwriter. Okay, I don't want to say songwriter, but I am a writer. And then I am an instrumentalist. I am also a vocalist. <laughs> yeah. I am a father. Yeah. <laughs> husband. <laughs> you don't know that. <laughs> I am a husband. <laughs> yeah. Mm, yeah, that is who I am. That is who you are. Yeah instrumentalist, vocalist, husband, father. What is one of, if, what is that one thing that you're doing right now that you possibly looked forward to while growing up? I don't I don't I don't remember if mm. I imagined I would come out this way. Yeah, I, I do not want to. Father, did you at least uh-huh. look forward to being one? <laughs> How the things that you will do, maybe you will scare the kids. No, I don't remember that part. I actually hate kids when when we growing up, growing up. Not now. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit. <laughs> no. Yeah. And now here you are. Yeah. What is it like? What is fatherhood like for you? Uh, what is your experience of it? It's beautiful. Mm-hmm. But sometimes you know you don't want to be about what beautiful and hectic. Sometimes you know you know with kids. They're beautiful and then annoying <laughs> both. So, yeah, that, that's how it is. Yeah. But I love it. And professionally, when we come to the questions of what do you want to be when you grow up? Mm. What is that thing that you wanted? What is that answer that you remember the most that you I, used to I give? wanted to be a pilot. Wow. Uh, yes, I wanted to be a pilot. What inspired like, you to want that? I used to see my dad, like in, in those, those words. They're called over helicopters, you know what? Mm-hmm. So I badly wanted to be. So your father was a pilot? I don't know if he was because I don't I don't remember much of much of him, but I actually saw pictures. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. I think that inspired me to, to think I would become one. <laughs> yes. So and how long? I remember like I, uh, like since childhood till like uh, my senior six. Wow. So I, when I finished my senior six I went to flying school 
It's in Soroti. Yeah, that's uh, Mike Mukula's, is it? Or is I, it a different I one? I don't know. But I went there to see if I can bring that dream to life. Mm -hmm. I went there. But the Kamani, yo. Hey, man. Hey, I've mm -hmm. heard. But it was around. I've heard how expensive it is. Way back then. So I don't know. I think it's. 57 million for how long? Is it a like particular term? What? But, uh, yeah. I went what? there. A and semester? Then, uh, yeah. I don't know. Did, I don't think my four years. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think in my four years in law school we got to fifty million. Yeah, I think it, I actually think it's more right now. Yeah. Wow. And then if you do pilot, uh, there's so much anyway. Mm -hmm. So if you do pilot, you you have to make sure at least one of your family members has a what plane, because there's no work for you. Okay, they do not get you a job if you're doing pilot unless if you're doing like engineering they get you a job like if you're doing pilot engineering so, so that the is money where... the money made you walk away from your dream who have could i get that money i understand, <laughs> I understand. <laughs> the money made you walk away from your dream and yeah, yeah. what did you think in that moment what was your plan b did you have a plan b immediately no, I didn't have a plan. Because, I mean, I'm looking at you carrying this from childhood to yeah, the age of possibly was, 17, 19. It was breaking. Uh-huh. Yeah. I went back home and thought about myself, what next? But I didn't have what next. <laughs> I know. Like, those are so many yeah. years of consistency with the yeah. dream. And what did you do? Because if you're finding yourself broken mm -hmm. and you can't really do the thing that you have worked or imagine to do from childhood actually what happened nothing. next nothing was you no know, i was stuck because that's what i wanted yeah i only wish my one of my kids oh you're still <laughs> carrying oh yeah will become maybe a pilot mm -hmm. i still have the dream i don't know how we're going to execute <laughs> but at least i'm saving for ezra king yeah. To become a pilot, to go to Soroti and then yeah. If he does not, maybe his his son will. Only sons? His uh, How about daughter. the daughter? Because <laughs> I don't have I don't have girls, so that's why I'm saying sons. Mm. Yeah. And so if you if you failed to figure out if you're looking at yourself stuck, mm. how did you come to the space of music? Mm, yeah. Were you musical from the time you do not remember or was it a particular moment that could have veered you into music? I, I think me, me I've been I've been musical since 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 childhood. Yeah, we had church there and then there are some white guys who used to come around uh, with instruments. On Saturdays, so we used to hang with those guys. That was at church. Yeah, a church. A church. That was a church. Uh, so they used to bring in bazungu. They used to play instruments, guitars, uh, drums, keyboards. So they used to call us on Saturdays. Come, there's biscuit. <laughs> then there are those were sweets <laughs> that are not nice. <laughs> Yeah. So, so what was driving you to that place where biscuits? It wasn't there, music? There's also porridge there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So porridge. you had weekend plots? Yeah, Sunday <laughs> at 10. Yeah. Go to Sunday school. There, there used to be biscuit and then... Yeah, but also... The the pastor's kids were mm -hmm. my good friends, so they used to call me. Like we used to, I used to hang much with with the bazungo, and they used to like carry instruments whenever they go. So we started there, like in good classes. I loved instruments. Then they taught me guitar. How old were you at that time? <laughs> I don't remember. I don't remember, but was it? after you being 10 or below the age of 10? I think that was below the age of 10. And you were already learning how to play the guitar? Yeah, I was already learning. I had one, they gave me one. Gave Whoa, me guitar, yeah. a personal one? Yes, give me one. You are good friends. <laughs> but even before, my brother, half my brother, so for him he used to play, used to play keyboard here in church. 
So he used to travel. And it was nice seeing him travel the world with just playing keyboard. So he was traveling the world? Yeah, or so it was inspiring, yeah. So that is, I think that was my start. So when you felt stuck, I, I really want to understand how you managed to come out of this position of mm. being stuck. Because I feel like mm. there are a couple of us mm. who have dreams mm. from childhood and we are sure we are supposed to be those particular things. You know, there's always a clue in life. There's always a clue in life. Yeah, like in everyone's life. Before I went to that uh, Soroti Flying School, mm-hmm. but Soroti Flying School, I don't remember. <laughs> you don't even remember flying that school. name. <laughs> yeah. Before, I used to do, actually, Senior 3. Mm-hmm. Senior 3, that was uh, 2008, I think. So I had a friend of mine, it's called Sony M. Mm-hmm. Sony M. So, Senior one, between senior one and senior three there, we used to go to a place and there was a PlayStation. Okay. So we used to go for PlayStations and then there was DJing, like there was my that that thing, it was called PC DJ. Mm-hmm. So they could make songs, we could, we could, we, we could go there and then see that guy like doing the DJ and the, then also he had a studio. But initially, our main point of going, our, our main reason of, of us going there was, was to play game. Yeah. And then we fell in love with the, with the DJ and then the studio thing. So, started from there. I got friends. I became friends with that guy, Sony. Mm-hmm. So, me, I knew keyboard. And then he didn't know as much as I did. But then he was way older than me. So he brought me clothes yeah, because he wanted something. Oh, he wanted to learn from yeah. you? So he could place a few chords in the studio. So we became friends. So between that time... That is senior three. Yeah, between senior it's, one and senior oh, three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We became more closer. It was also a musical fami- family. It was... Uh, but <laughs> very, very confusing people. <laughs> It was a family. We used to go and hang there. So we became friends. I started learning a few things in, in his studio. Yeah, there's too much I learned within. The three years? Yeah, the three years. So one day he told me, I'm leaving. I'm moving out of the country, but I have pending work. Can you help me finish? Still in senior one to S3? Yes. No way. Yeah. So he told me, where he was... He was going to Canada, I remember. So he told me, I have this project, blah, blah, blah. But you can do this thing. I'll give you like 30. Like per project, you can take like 30,000. 30, between 30 and 50. So I used to give the, the other balance to, to his mom. So I did some projects there. <coughs> now the studio was mine for some time because it was S1 away. to S3. Yeah. So I started arranging some things. So were you in day school? Sorry? Were you in day school? Yeah, day school. And were your parents aware of what you had Actually, doing? I was not in day school, as in boarding school, but during the holidays. So I was away. And so when you'd be in school, you'd close? Yeah. Business? <coughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> that is a very short time of presence, because I yeah. think holidays back then would be like for two weeks. Yeah, it was like one month, four weeks. So yeah, I, I got some skills there, but I loved it very much. It was exciting. I wasn't even thinking about the money, even if you told me, you do it for free, I would do it for free. Yeah. And were your parents aware of what you were doing? I don't think they were. I don't think. No, they, they were not. <laughs> if they had found out what would their reaction be, what do you think their reaction would be? I think be? it would be okay, since mm-hmm. now. I had a brother, elder brother. Who was oh, who already. was already into music. So... Yeah. But then this is going as far as you, in short, owning a studio. Yeah. So he told me, uh, the guy told me I would come back, but I don't know when. Did he ever come back? Yeah, he did, after some time. And all that time you were managing the studio? Yeah, managing the studio. How long did that take? It was about almost a year. Almost a year? Yeah. So it didn't go beyond your S3? No, I didn't. Mm-hmm. But the other time was, like, he used to come back and then leave, like, like that. So you are stuck in this moment of you no longer having to think about being a pilot. Mm. And you've talked about how life always has a clue. Yeah. What is that 
thing so that the, happened. That's, that's the clue, actually. After, this, after, after me going to, to, to the flying school and then things are what now? So uh, the clue was Tony M, that guy. Because if, if he gave me work at that age, mm-hmm. so I think it, it, it meant something very big in my life. It is something that I could, I could get back to. Yeah. Because I wasn't, I don't think I was ready for that then as I am today. But then you executed the project. So. Yeah, I did. Mm. I did. So that was the clue in life. Would you have an idea of how long it might have taken you to come out of that stagnant position of feeling like I'm doomed? Actually, this is what happened. After, after, after the, the school, after me going to Sarit and then things failed, mm-hmm. there came Coca-Cola rated next. Really? Think, it was, I think, because I, I remember I went there in 2000. 11 or 12 then Coca-Cola rated next happened in 2013 so I had this this friend he's a he's a he's a what he's a pastor now so I used to to bring to bring him to studio hey mwana come come and see what anyway the, the guy is called Bruna so Bruna told me this this thing Coca-Cola what 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 why don't you hey blah blah and it's like nah, this thing is not for me so <laughs> he had a sister called Anita. Anita Ayewari. Bananga was crushing on Anita. <laughs> but then Bruna called me, you have to go for this the first time. That was 2013. And then never to go back. Oh. So I didn't go through. Then For the, the auditions? Yeah. Auditions, but top what? Then oh, at least you reached top something. Huh? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Then Neshidam Neshivira the other what? <coughs> the next, the following year. So Bruno and Namba, this is the other opportunity what you can jump on it again. So I went back. So this time around, we went to the top, the top ten. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So where well, the top ten? I remember. I think it was 2014 there. If I'm not mistaken, 2014, 2015. Mm-hmm. So we went through the top 10 Qualico pages. Qualico, there was pages, there was uh, Zabu, there was uh, Winnie, Winnie, Winnie Maji right now. Oh, there yeah. There was uh, SRE, there was uh, Lillian, Lillian Bagan and Wakola Obsession Zao. <laughs> But there are very, very many talented people, the, the top ten. So who won that thing? It was Ruth Grace. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Ruth. Yeah, so we started now, somehow serious. Yeah, the journey started somehow. There are, there are okay, signs that maybe we can do this thing. We can take on this music thing. And that's how you ended up as a vocalist, instrumentalist? Actually, I've, I've, I've been multi. Like, since, since way back, I was multi. I've been multi instrumentalist. Like, I used to play drums, keyboard, and then what, guitar, and then could play. Play all those things. You can manage playing every other instrument that comes across. I do. Even the drums. Yes, I do drums. I used to play drums at church. Is it like you got a. Is is that the training that you could have gotten from those bazungos? Actually, they gave me the training. Mm. Mostly, Mm. especially the guitar. But I never imagined that one day I would would, would come out as a vocalist. Because now I am. That you'll build a career out of that. Someone talked about how we need to look back at the ages of seven, seven or eight, Mm. usually the things that we are doing, we end up doing those things in our adult age Mm. or build a career out of them. Mm. So when you talk about it, it sort of makes sense for me. The internet does not have so much of you. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe I deleted. (laughs) Oh, oh yeah? (laughs) I think maybe or you really did that. It doesn't have so much of you like hey it requires i think someone to to look for you traditionally <laughs> <laughs> and make consultations in the societies that you come from to really understand the works of 
Hudson Hanks. Yeah. What could be happening off the internet that we aren't really experiencing mm. musically? Musically, yeah, okay. Off off the internet, I don't know what is happening. <laughs> you don't know what is happening. Uh, uh, anyway, I, I I don't think I don't know what how people see me. I don't know if they take me as a producer, as a songwriter, as an artist. Mm-hmm. But uh, off off the internet, off off music. Me, I'm a I'm a parent. <laughs> that's what. That's right. By the way, you, that is not say. seen. <laughs> Barely yeah. seen. Yes, yeah, so I'm a parent and also I'm a husband. Someone is husband. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What does that feel like in our millennial age? Yeah. To me, it's beautiful, but to the world, it's confusing. What is really? What do you feel like is confusing to the world? How 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 you can be married and and then uh, doing music? Oh, is that it? Yes, I think so. How? Help me understand. Hey, I saw a post on, on, on Facebook where someone was saying, oh, they were saying how the society looks at you. If you introduce yourself as a YouTuber, mm-hmm. how, how society takes you. It's the same thing, African society. Saying if you introduce yourself as a musician, as an artist, they take you for like this. This person is not serious. I thought we came out of that. Not all of, not all of them. Maybe you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's not just me. There are other people. <laughs> yeah, the smallest percentage. So wait, African they find society. it surprising that you're married? Yeah, they find it surprising that you could settle down and you know, be a good husband, be <laughs> be a parent. <laughs> Yeah. How we how do you how would you want us to come out of that stereotype? Or do you ever get to have these conversations with those people, a deeper understanding? No, they do not want to have such conversations. Oh they want <laughs> society to society does not want to have such conversations. They already have a definition to like And who it you should are. be that? No, it shouldn't be like No, like that. for them they feel like yeah. we should maintain the status quo of how we view unless, artists. You know, unless someone is close to you. That's how they will, they, will, they will understand what is going on in your life. That music can bring in some money, not even some money, money. They can take care of you, what, 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 those things. So they do not define art as like, like work. It's a pastime. <laughs> <laughs> You're supposed to be a doctor, engineer, yeah. those yeah, kinds of yeah, things. What? That is when yeah. society respects you. That is that is how society is defining us, yeah, which is yeah, a very yeah. bad thing. Mm. <laughs> yes, and I don't know how we're going to go about that, but the only way to go about that is like winning. Keep winning. Like keep winning, showing these people that you know. Okay, you are you are, you are having your office there. Yeah, uh, which car are you driving? Driving this car. <laughs> no, I'm driving this car. See your life. <laughs> <laughs> you're having your you you you're having your kids in this school, and I'm having my kids in the same school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, how many hours are you are you spending in your office? Nine to five. How many hours am I spending on stage? Three hours. Yes, yeah, so I think society should understand that, and to everyone. So you you feel like we need to be appreciative of the different aspects of life. Yeah. That it shouldn't be one thing. What do you feel like the millennials are handling the beat of parenting and marriage? Mm. Do you feel like there is a shift from traditional ways of uh, looking at parenting and marriage? <laughs> of course, this this <laughs> wow, can I s- from say what it? from what you might have experienced growing up with your parents? Mm. Do you feel like there there are some things that don't work in our age? So many. So many. Because now, when you're married, it's two people. Two people mean someone grew up in a different society, mm-hmm. community, and then you also work leader from a different society, community. Yeah. So, is not the way I might, I might want to 
I'm very traditional. I, I might want to spend like uh, the weekend home with my kids. Mm-hmm. But then my wife does not like it that way. She wants us to like go out. We do not, we are not going to cook this weekend. <laughs> Actually, every weekend we are not going to cook. We are taking the kids out swimming and what and that is not what we used to to do when growing up like us mm-hmm. ha saturday saturday was for cola <laughs> cola you wake up <laughs> like you mop over what the whole house scrub the walls <laughs> everything <laughs> to like what well, like to take food at four <laughs> and then you know yeah, but things are different now yeah and also we are thankful for technology. Yeah. How is technology helpful in that in space? The, in that space, learning. Like for the kids. Mm. You do not have to, to get Simanya what and then write for the kid this, this, this. But if you have a video, you can play it for like your, your son, doctor, so they can learn from, from whatever they're saying. And it wasn't like that. Uh, way back. Do you feel like it's a better thing? Um, it's taking away the bonding from the parents and the children? Halfway. I don't think it's the best thing to do. Mm. Sometimes you are busy and then you need substitute. <laughs> oh, a substitute. <laughs> so it sort of makes parenting easier yeah. in our times. Yeah, mm-hmm. very much. Very much makes it easier. And for the beats of marriage, we're having so much of oh, marriage is a scum. <laughs> marriage is a scum, mm. or I don't, I, I'm still I'm still struggling to to mm. get those things on my fingertips. But I think mostly I see marriage is a scum. <laughs> but there are other things yeah. that people say on the internet. Mm. Well, love is something. Yeah, don't trust those things on the internet. But to me, marriage is beautiful. However, just like any other journey, there are ups and downs. Mm. So you just need to embrace the ups and then also embrace the downs. That is why it is very, very important for you to have a good friend, uh, your partner. Mm -hmm. And also, that is why I I disagree with people who say, Buno, me, Simanya, I met my wife one month, two months, Three months in a Tukolo and then a wedding. I totally <laughs> disagree with that. You think the time is a valuable thing in going in for the marriage? And time is very important. Like you never get to, to, to know about the will, the will someone unless you now you start like spending time with them. Not just spending time with them, but having full time with them. People can change. But then, yeah. you see that thing, I, 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 I also used to have this imagination that mm. you need to take a couple of years before mm. coming to a final decision of marriage or choosing to stay with this person permanently throughout your life. Mm. But there is a post that I landed on, I don't know how many years ago, mm. that I think they were still talking about timing. Mm. And this one lady, <laughs> that was really a crazy comment that I read, mm. it really stuck with me and she said that she had traveled. Mm. Just like how I'll leave mm. Kampala and go to Jinja and find some dudes mm-hmm. get married in two weeks mm. and they were celebrating 27 years in marriage. Mm. Wow, that's magical. And I was like, okay. And then you're going to read possibly mm. some posts on Facebook mm. and they're going to be talking about how they have been dating for 10 years and the marriage can't work in two months so yeah. i don't know i feel like timing is it's, it's, it's a complex thing yeah but also some 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 moments are like one in a million opportunity because how, the tourist thing yeah it's, it's it's magical but things happen mm. things happen however i still disagree with that mm, mm, mm. Yeah, because there's so many things that <laughs> that change your life. You know, in person. I can't, I can't even imagine. But marriage is beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. More so if you have someone who like understands you and also now, like for me, 
the kind of work I do. Mm-hmm. I'm on stage, I'm in studio, so I need someone, really, I need someone who will understand me, like, full-time, 200%. <laughs> will understand me because I have always have lights on, I always like phones, what, what, camera on, like all time. So if you're that kind of person who's, who's going to be there, what, what, then it will never work out. So when you talk about the need of finding someone who, because when you're talking about it, I'm looking at you talking about possibly your position. Yeah. I'm also going to ask you, do you think feel like you understand the person that you're with very much mm-hmm. yeah what Do, we have because i think i feel like when we are talking about i want this i mm. want this mm. many <clears throat> times we forget whether we can give back the same exactly but the the the, the most important thing to do which is also a hard thing to do is talking about what you want or what I want. What you want, you tell your partner what you want. Some people find it like awkward because if I tell you what, what I want, you might, you know, like fake it and then for some time. Mm-hmm. But it is also important in the long run. It is very, very important for someone to know what exactly you want. So if you understand the, that, yeah. Now, me nowadays, I, I talk about the things that I do not want and the things that I want. Mm-hmm. I now ask my partner if they're comfortable with that, if they're what they want, what they do not want. So I get to know them. Yeah. So when you mention the things that you want and the other person isn't comfortable with them, is there a moment of readjustment? That is, that is the reason as to why I ask. Communication. Yeah. So do you think that is something we have with us? No. <laughs> no, it's not something that, that everyone is going to do. Their make is, is that way. Like, they Yeah, so this but does not like, apply to everyone. I feel like everyone. it's a very common attitude. Yes. The what? I mean, there is even a song, Sagala Manya, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and those things mm. that we see on social media. Mm or even the music that we consume, the f- kind of entertainment mm. that we consume on a daily, I feel like they really inform our actions subtle, in, in a subtle way, yeah. whereby we might not be aware that Tetuaga yeah. Kumanya, but we actually do not want to Kumanya because of you know these things that in, get imprinted on mm. our psyche or our subconscious. <laughs> but you know, it's respect. Like to like to your lifetime partner, it's it's just respect. You cannot be doing the saga la manya all the time because at the yeah, end of the yeah, day, yeah. it's you and then the person you go back to. The person you go back to. Yes. Mm-hmm. When lights are off, when cameras are down, when what things did not go well, uh, they did not pay you. It's either you are going to go back in your bedroom and then think about. The, the, what happened, or you're going to go back and share with that person. So if you do not respect them, I think then you're going to be like everywhere. Mm. So it's a decision everyone should make. It's just respect. It's just respect. Mm. So we talk about uh, mental health mm. here on the podcast. Mm. Has there been a moment where you feel like your mental health was heavily compromised yeah or was it like for you in that moment hmm. <laughs> it was about how I don't know but I've learned before I share mm-hmm. I've learned like to deal with that I think it's just growth and then also expecting that it might you know come in so and most times we are expecting much. Mm-hmm. And I think that's one of the reasons that we, we end up that way. But I remember lockdown, lockdown brought that. I remember the second lockdown, the, the second lockdown. Oh, last year? Yeah. <laughs> ah, yeah, 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 yeah. That was really bad. I had never experienced that. The first lockdown, I don't know, I, I, I went through it. 
somehow God came through and you know. Mm-hmm. But the last this last one was really, really bad for me. Really, really bad for me. It wasn't about career but it was about family. Mm-hmm. It was depressing to like getting to a point where like you now cannot even take care of your family, you know? Yeah. And then it was really bad. I'm not that kind of a person who even at my worst it is hard for me to say man. Call it I achi. Ndagala yeche with ndagala yeche. This is very hard for me. Mm. I will always talk to my partner and go my you know. Siri is there a way we can do this out or but now last lockdown was really bad. I got to a point where I got to a point where there was nothing like nothing. Yeah, I can't even ah! like nothing. It was like depressing that we didn't have money. Mm-hmm. Like to zero, like to negative. It was really bad. Not even affording like what pampas, what what. Yeah, then <laughs> my wife my wife was pregnant. Uh-huh. Then <laughs> so got it funny and sad. We used to joke about things like what your man or you. What if what if what if like it's your it's your date to to like sukuma to to give birth. Uh-huh. And then we don't have money. What is going to happen? So we used to joke about that. So she in that to... moment or was it before? No, in that moment. <laughs> she used to talk about that gamugamba and I, I used to tell her, man, don't do not mention, her. do not mention. She's like, how are we going to do that? But we need to make like we need to be good people in this world. I remember I found I think he is an angel. <laughs> I met someone. It was one time I was from there's a place in Bokoto. I met someone, some guy. So we were there, we're having a good time, eating, drinking, what? So I told them, I told my guys, me, I'm going. So there was a guy next to me. So me, I told, I told the guys, Banange, let me go back to Chanja. Mm. So guys were telling me, Kali, so this guy next to me told me, wait, I'm, I'm, I'm taking what? The same route, so you can wait for like 30 minutes and I can drop you. Because I wasn't driving. So I waited. So I sat in this guy's car. And then it was silent. So I told him, let me play for you some of my music. So I played, I played, I, the first song I played, first song I played was Kampala Mwam. The guy got excited. He was like, we, eh, we have not had this kind of music. Eh, we have not heard about you, what? Yeah. Hey, 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 we can. Hey, hey. He was so excited. He told me, "I'm giving you this amount of money. I'm giving you. We need to meet this person. Blah blah blah." So. Oh yeah. In that moment, na chuse mo I see goosebumps. Like, <laughs> how are things just changing? Yeah. So in that moment, na chuse mo to kai. He called some guy. Oba eo bashir oba who. He also took me to a pass. He called a pass. What? Oh went yeah. To the studio. Blah blah blah. So that very night that very night before we got home wasn't it lockdown period <laughs> no that, Cut I'm you. just taking you back oh yeah yeah uh, how things happen we need to be good people so we I, 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 we became friends with that guy just like that he took me right, right, give me some money there and then some good money so lockdown came first of all so I was there with my wife what 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 So he used to come home. Oh, he, he used to come. He used to come home. He's mm-hmm. a family man. So what he has he's dating a Okay, his wife. Mm. Is is Kenyan Tanzanian. So we are not so that close, but he used to come. He used to call me, "Hey, man, how are you? Are you home?" He says in Chisas. Let me come home with my wife and the kids. So I think it was also God uh, using someone to bless me. Yeah. So he could he could come home with like milk and what in that in that period of time where like we needed something because we were like on zero somehow you were surviving we were surviving that guy used to come home 
with like food and, and stuff for the wife. And we could sit there, chat, chat, what, what, what. We're not even that so close. But he at least every week mm-hmm. used to come home. It was depressing because I got to a point. I was like, oh, but should I tell this guy oh, but, to, to like give me at least like, 50,000? But he's a new friend. How can I do that? Yeah. I did not want to, to like corrupt her friendship. Mm. But I knew he could do it. But uh, that moment was uh, was one of the worst. Actually, not one of the worst. The worst, worst moment I've ever been through. <laughs> it was very bad. But we got we got out of that thing. Yeah. We got out of that thing. Time came. Uh, the day we uh, we had to. I don't know if, I, if I'm talking too much, but <laughs> <laughs> on the day we had to deliver, just before. We had still joked about the situation. Yeah. How are we going to do this? Yeah? I was like, man, don't joke. <laughs> so you guys find humor in most of the times. <laughs> yeah. So Munanga was there in, in, in bed, and then guess what? She, she tapped me. What's that? What's that? I was like, what are you talking about? So in that moment, what a go. So I saw, Whoa. I was like, God, Lord, no. No. Okay, this is the time. <laughs> it's the time. So, so she went to the internet and then Google what, what, what. I was like, what, what the hell are you doing right now? She dressed up, let's go to the hospital. We didn't know which hospital we were going to. But she wanted to go to Smanya Malcolm. Or Malcolm. Mm-hmm. So I just moved out of my house, knocked my neighbor, so I told her, Claire. So she told me, is she ready? That, that is what my neighbor told me, even without asking. So I told, she told me, do you need the car? So she gave me her car. And then she asked me, do you have some money on you? Wow. So I told her, I have mobile money. So she gave me cash. She gave me cash and told me you can use that to like feel well. So I put my wife in the car and then we went straight to I drove, but I didn't know where exactly we were going. So we drove, I didn't take her to Malcolm. Mm-hmm. No. I drove, she had told me about a hospital that I didn't even know where it is. But I just drove straight to that way. From Chanja to Tugugolovi. Yo, that is passing town and then going. Yeah, yeah. So I was crossing through like Ntindao. So I knocked someone. Oh my goodness. There's a a, a, a Shidao cabin. It had a huge number plate. I put my choke and then bah! So I stopped. I put double indicator. indicator. So the guy came out and checked his car. So he came and told me, young man, what is happening? I'm going my boss. I have a pregnant woman here. Sorry. So I was like, okay. So whew. Oh, he didn't say anything else? No, he didn't say anything else. He moved. Ah, and I took my wife to the hospital. And uh, how things happened was magical. Things worked out. Because that, that, is one of the, well, that is one of the things that I was so much worried about. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. How are we going to get out of the situation without, like, yeah. So at that moment, I had, I had little money on me, and I did not want to call for help. <laughs> but then I called someone, some lady. They are, like, family friends. They are the ones we go to when we have some issues. What? So I told her, Stella, I need this amount of money. She didn't reply. Ah, well then, uh, like five minutes past, I saw a message. So I went and cleared my bill. It was, it was a miracle how things worked out. Yeah. Going forward, do you feel like you have the audacity to ask for help? At least I to check everyone... out on people, to loan you some courage or, you know, come out of a situation? I, I think it's, uh, everyone needs help. 
it's just it's it becomes hard for some people sometimes but everyone needs help like at some point you need help it doesn't yeah. matter who you are mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you need help it's okay it's just hard for some people me to ask for help however i don't think it's a cool thing or what i think it's natural you can ask for help <laughs> yeah yeah but uh I don't know how I got out of that situation. I got much because the person and so was actually you wrote a big big I made a big post it was like a poem. Oh yeah. I posted it on Facebook but then later I deleted. <laughs> I don't know I don't know when when exactly I means. became friends with you on Facebook. Yeah. But I don't I don't know if it is a year already. I'm not certain. I'm not sure too. Certain. But it was me talking about the government economy and then how we f- how we got to this point. Yeah. It was me expressing my and then you putting out it. my whole there. <laughs> Why did you delete it? And it was so so personal. It was it had so much detail. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Mm. Going forward, how do you think you're going to be taking care of your mental health? Is it something that you've figured out? Um, I've experienced it again, but uh, everyone needs to give themselves time. Sometimes you do not have to compete with you. <laughs> Neither anybody. Yeah. Because it puts you to a point where you, you have no choice. Like, you know you cannot even run to yourself because oh, you, yeah. you, uh, you don't have the resources to yeah. help yourself yeah have the resources to help yourself but also uh, giving yourself time everything you know time is a very very important thing in life time 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 can heal you time I was going through some hard time back, back then so you know what what because I, I, I couldn't actually create. I got to a point where I could not create. Mm-hmm. It had never happened in my whole life. And someone came to me and was telling me, we are giving you this amount of money. We need you to create this for us. So even and money I wasn't needed... a motivation at all? Sorry? Even money wasn't a motivation? Just no. Like, I wanted that money so bad, but I tried creating and I was blocked. I could not, because like, oh, give me two days. I failed to get that money and I wanted that money. So to the creatives, like you, you don't have to be so hard on yourself. Give mm. yourself some time, however good you are. Sometimes you need to relax. Sometimes you need to to be in like good spaces to clear your mind. It helps you not to get to that point where, hey man, I've done a lot. I need this now. So giving yourself time can help. But also if you find yourself in, in, in a situation like that where you're depressed, share. Share with yeah, friends, close. You're not talking about something. Mm-hmm. It's the way it makes you feel. Somehow you, you are relieved. Yeah, Somehow you yeah, feel yeah, yeah, yeah. Like better. It's, it's, not, it's not an easy thing to come out and then start sharing because everyone is judging now. Mm. They might say, ah, the, oh yeah, yeah, take a sympathy, what, what. Seeking attention. Seeking attention. So, but I think that's the best way to go about depression. If you can go out and hang with friends, find beautiful places, like be caught there and don't spend too much time alone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not to, you can spend some time alone, but not too much time alone. For some people, it works for them, I yeah. think. Yeah, for me, it works for me. Mm. But I, could not, I, I do not recommend it. I love being alone in spaces <laughs> like this. It makes me feel better. And for the place of music, mm. is there mm. some way how people can, you know, you make money out mm. of your music, I mm. believe. And is there a collaboration mm. or any services that you offer that you think our listeners can tap into? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I do production. Mm-hmm. Yes, and I write songs. I write songs, I do production, but also I have, I have a band. So we do weddings, we do regular gigs uh, for like restaurants, bars. Basically, 
That is what I do. How can they get in touch with you? Uh, uh, social media is uh, my name is there, Hudson Hanks. Yeah, you can send me a message everywhere. Hudson Hanks, Instagram, Hudson Hanks, uh, Twitter, Hudson Hanks, Facebook, uh, which other? <laughs> I think there are three. Is there any other? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Snapchat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is, Snapchat, is Snapchat just for taking pictures or is there messaging? I don't know. Okay, I don't know that one, but... We can ignore that. <laughs> <laughs> so you're just all available on the three platforms? Yes, I am mm-hmm. uh, on those three. But also, if you want to listen to my music, yeah, last year, no, the other year, 2020, 2020 mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I released an album. It's called Motima. So you can find it on uh, Spotify, Apple Music, Tidal, Deezer, Online, online stores. Mm-hmm. So you can get it, you can buy. I think uh, it's about $10. That's very affordable. It is. <laughs> there are 10 songs. Yeah, it's, it's a beautiful album. It has good music. Yeah, so you can also so check advise me out, them uh, to stream. Yeah, stream, mm-hmm. stream and download. Buy. Don't just. Do <laughs> I don't think it's available for no more, no more download. No, it's, it's not. Because the streaming, uh, the yeah, streaming platforms don't give that. that. YouTube, YouTube, YouTube Music. If you're using it, then you can get it. Yeah. So that's all? There are no phone numbers? Uh, you can also contact me at uh, 784 486858 yeah, Do it again. 784 Six eight five eight. All right, Hudson. Thank you so much for giving us your time and sharing your experience with life with us. Thank you for having me. My takeaway from this episode is give yourself time. Giving yourself time while trying to make this life make sense is one of the ways you can be kind to yourself. Thank you so much, Hudson, for closing April with these words of wisdom. Thank you for tuning in to Hashtag with Nabuguzi Chwanuka. If you love what you heard, make sure you subscribe to Hashtag with Nabuguzi Chwanuka in your podcast platform of choice. And make sure that your friends know the kind of content that you consume. Don't be selfish. Be sure to tag us on social media while sharing your insights about what connected with you on Facebook and Instagram. We are at Hashtag with Nabuguzi Chwanuka. And on E... Wait. <laughs> on Twitter... Oh man, Elon Musk. <laughs> On Twitter, we are at HTNK Podcast. You can also reach us on our email at htnkpodcast at gmail.com. I really look forward to hearing from you. Do not send me hi or good morning. Just plain. Like, are you guys kidding me? They don't do that on email. Not anymore. Oh, come on. <laughs> but. Until the next episode, I'd wish for you to give yourself time. Don't rush yourself. Let, don't let the internet rush you. Give yourself time.